Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Generation, America's only weekly program dedicated to and catering to all about Native youth. On today's program, we travel to Barrow, Alaska, and learn all about the youth there. But first, we go to King Cove, King Cove, Alaska. We visit some youth who starred in an anti-tobacco commercial. Let's take a look at that right now. My name is Frank Allen Yachnu. I'm from King Cove, and this generation will be right back. <laughs> I forgot about that. You know, I'm getting into this. <laughs> 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 uh oh. Smokeless tobacco can be life threatening, one way or another. I'm gonna do you! Yuck. Can you imagine what it was like to drink that? Well, let's find out. Let's go behind the scenes to the Teen Center at King Cove, Alaska. First, we have to decide who the dunker would be in the commercial. So we had a little dunking contest. I won, of course. I don't know. Uh, I didn't like it too much because Sonny Weiss got to dunk on me in real life. I would have swatted him. Uh, sorry, one more. <laughs> Whoops. Mess up. <laughs> I dunked it over two guys, and I, I was a cool guy at first, then I was a chewing tobacco, so I wasn't so cool anymore. <laughs> My part was to uh, drink this stuff that someone spit uh, chewing. Yeah, Sonny got to spit in a can, and Steven had to drink that tea stuff. Oh, we just picked Steven because, just because, because I wasn't going to do it. Yeah. And everybody voted him, too. So, yeah. What was it like to drink from the spit bottle? Probably. <laughs> be like, oh, that's nasty and stuff like that. And be like, oh, that's sick. What does it taste like and smell like and stuff like that? That's what they're probably be saying. Stuff. I didn't care. I'll like, I'll do it. It's just take some time and I'll think about it, but I'll probably still do it. <laughs> The spit bottle really didn't have spit in it at all. We used tea leaves and regular tap water, but that's not necessarily what Steve is telling people. Well, I like to mess around a lot, so I think I'll just let them know that, well, I'd just say it was real tobacco and throw some out of it, and then <laughs> I'd say real spit in it, and then after a while, I'll just say I was joking around. And then Steve got to chase Sonny. Yeah. That's a pretty funny stuff there. Sweet and sour chicken or fried rice. I just won first place. When they're not in the gym, the teens in the Swap and Spit Bottle public service announcement like to hang out at the King Cove Teen Center. Connie Newton runs the center. And it was developed about um, six, seven years ago. We were looking for something um, to get the kids off the 
driving around in cars late at night. And uh, the city was great enough to give us the building. It was an old ceramics building. Um, the kids actually developed this center. It's all been designed by the students six years ago. And uh, we put it together, and the city pays for the workers that work here. King Cove is a village of about 800 people, perched near the end of the Alaska Peninsula. Peter Pan Seafoods operates what many consider the biggest seafood plant in Alaska right here. The plant sits in the middle of the village and in the middle of the village's economy. Pretty much like all other towns, people are friendly. And they bring you in and go out and do all of their activities that we always do and go fishing, bike riding. Uh, people watch out for us, it's just, uh, yeah. like, if they're about to fight somebody, they'll be like, it's, um, breaking up. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff like that. Pretty true, I mean, we got little packs of friends, <laughs> right. little cliques of people, and, you know, everybody kind of just watches out for each other, you know, everybody's got each other's back and stuff, so. It's pretty cool, we got a pretty close community. Fanny Jo Newton likes to hang over at the youth center. She knows how isolated King Cove can be and how important it is for the youth to have something to do. Yeah, I come down here pretty much almost every night. I'm pretty much a regular out here. Come here for lunches all the time. It's a place where everybody can chill and socialize, have a good time. Of course, there's absolutely no cussing. If you cuss, it's a dollar, and there's no fighting, of course. And if you fight or get loan property or anything, you gotta you get kicked out for a month or a week or whatever the monitors think it should be. And there's no drugs, no alcohol, no anything like that around here, or else you're kicked out either permanently or for a month or however they decide to have it. Well, you have to be a member. You have to pay a membership due if it's $2 a month or $20 a year, and that helps us buy um, decorations and stuff for the dances we have. We have uh, an event going on once a month throughout the year just for the kids, just to give them something to do, and they love to dance. And uh, we have scavenger hunts, bonfires, anything that will keep the kids together, having a good time without alcohol, drugs, or tobacco. Tonight at the Teen Center, everyone is waiting to find out who will win the drawing contest. I drew this picture, and I got first place for Stephen got second and third. So I don't know. He kind of came out on top just like me. So. See, they put up a sign and they say, like, there's a drawing contest. First, 30 bucks. Second, 15. And then uh, third is 10. Then. Some of the elements, well, I guess this is supposed to be me somehow. It's where the eyes are crossed off because I have no identity. And then, the, symbol, the girl symbol represents me, and that's the guy symbol, which means you know, I'm kind of far away from the guy. And let's see, I'm always locked in my house, <laughs> babysitting, I guess you could say. And uh, yeah, everything else is just kind of abstract drawing. But that's kind of about me. I can't really name it right now. I had it going when I drew it, so yeah. Well, it, you have to draw the pictures here, and they have a difference, they have a color drawing and then they have a pencil drawing and no color. And you can draw pretty much whatever you want as long as it has no drugs, alcohol or anything illegal in it. Nighttime isn't the only time it's busy around here. Teen Center members often eat lunch here instead of in the school. There's time for a quick game of pool, but make sure you're back in school on time. For the teens here in King Cove, the center is more than just a place to shoot pool or mow down on lunch. Friendships 
That form in the teen center will last a lifetime. Smokeless tobacco can be life-threatening, one way or another. I'm gonna do you! From King Cove, Alaska, all the way up to the top of the world, to Barrow, Alaska. And Barrow Youth, I'm so sorry I didn't get to meet with you during the AFN convention. Let's plan on it next year. In Barrow, Alaska, instead of watching TV, sitting around doing nothing, the youth there are busy wailing, they're drumming, and they're dancing. When you think of Barrow, Alaska, you might think of the endless sea of ice that blankets the Chukchi, or perhaps the mighty Inupiat hunters who spend days and sometimes weeks in search of the bowhead whale. For others, it's the music that's sung with passion and conviction that sticks with them. No matter what you think about when you think of Barrow, after this program, you will have a new way to look at the nation's northernmost community through the eyes of the youth. Imagine growing up in a land where 60 below zero is not uncommon. Imagine having the necessary skills and knowledge to survive in a climate of this nature. For the youth of Barrow, it's the way they're taught. Being able to read the ice and recognize dangerous conditions or understanding the ocean currents of their hunting grounds. In this Inupiat community of over 4,000 people, you won't find shopping malls or congested freeways. Instead, you'll find a culture that is deeply rooted in heritage and tradition. The youth aren't glued to the internet or burdened with the problems of city life. Instead, they are youth with a different perception of life, one that encompasses survival in the far north. <laughs> If you're ever out on the ice when the people of Barrow are pulling in a whale, you'll see what I mean. Side by side, the youth of Barrow are working with the adults to get the huge task completed. It's a task that requires strength and stamina, but most importantly, it requires a grounded knowledge of their surroundings, which can often change in a moment's notice. In fact, on May 12, 2002, a group of whalers miles from shore on the edge of the ice pack were attempting to bring a whale upon the ice flow when... Oh my gosh! The ice that the hunters were on broke free from the ice pack and the current began to pull the large ice flow and the stranded whalers further and further out into the Arctic Ocean. We got 45 men, five ladies, and eight kids. 58 people found themselves stranded on an ice floe that was being swept away by the current. I wasn't scared, I was just worried about all the, the young kids and uh, the people that tried to go back to the shore when we broke away. And uh, 
Our elders always tell us not to panic when something like this happens, you know, you just gotta pray. Maybe three or four years ago, there was a, a rescue that was even bigger. There was like 171 whalers that they had to pluck off the ice with the choppers. They had three choppers going, I think, the two big ones and the little uh, L1. So this is not the first time that, that whalers have been rescued with the chopper. It took all morning, but with the help of search and rescue, all 58 people were rescued and returned to safety. And all but two snow machines were safely retrieved. And although these whalers are not in need of being rescued, there is a huge concern on everyone's mind. When the wind changes, west wind, that's when the ice starts coming in. Right now we want, we want to try and get east winds or let the wind pick up stronger so it can, so it can blow, out. blow away. This 56-foot bowhead whale will provide enough food for several families in Barrow, provided they can get the whale up on the ice before the approaching ice flow buries the whale for good. Most of the bowhead is still in the water, and getting it up on the ice will be a challenge with the limited number of workers that are here today. The decision is made to cut the whale in half, securing what is still in the water to the ice pack they're on. Now, the task of butchering one half of the whale can be completed while they wait for the ice flow to recede. Before we left uh, all that, the survey or the uh, pack ice was um, going over the whale and it's going underwater. Um, we had to cut half of the whale off. Had to do it real fast too. From the cutting of the muktuk and meat to the laborious job of hauling the meat to the shore, the youth are an integral part of whaling. Without the young people here today, the harvest would be considerably less. Although more than half of the whale is still in the water, the encroaching ice flow refuses to leave. The whalers will have to pull their gear for today and try again tomorrow. For the youth here today, their work is not yet done. Now begins the task of separating the meat and muktuk into shares. Some of the meat and muktuk will be saved for a picnic to celebrate the capture of the whale, while most of the catch will be split into shares and divided amongst the community. All of those who helped here today will get a share of the catch. We call this nipping, uh, and all this this is nipping meat, and this. This is um, the 
a tail. We call it a kick cock. This is a muck duck. All this is muck duck. Where's that at? That was... Edgar Skin was born and raised here in Barrow. Although surrounded by an ever-changing world of technology and Western teachings, Edgar has managed to embrace a lifestyle that is submerged in tradition. During the summer months, Edgar works at the Anubat Heritage Center in Barrow, performing for the thousands of tourists who make the trek to Barrow each year. Here you'll find many youth with a strong grasp of who they are and where they come from. have learned the songs and dances of their ancestors and embraced a culture that is rightfully theirs. these youth performing at the Heritage Center every summer, but you'll also find them practicing every week at the Barrow Fire Department. It seems that their heritage is more than a job to them. It's a joy. They spend hours upon hours repeating the movements and playing the songs that they learned years ago. Here you'll also find Edgar setting the tempo for each song. For this group of drummers and dancers, Edgar holds a special place amongst the ranks. You see, Edgar makes all of the drums for this group. This stuff is um, liver membrane from a boyhood well, and I got out from um, Stephen Levitt's well this spring. And we use this to cover our drums. And as you can see, there's still some liver on it, and we need to take that off before I could put it on. First, I'm going to see if there's any holes. And there's a hole right there. What do you do when there's a hole? Um, you could patch it with a ptarmigan stomach, our state bird, no ptarmigan. Edgar also steams and bends the wood that will become the frame for the drum. From the beginning to the end, Edgar puts to use drum making skills he learned from his elders years ago. Okay, I'm about to put this string around in this groove, and that the string will be what keeps the cover on and tight. And as I'm pulling it, as I go, just keep making it tighter. It's very brittle when it's dry, so that's why I keep getting the center wet when we strike it, to keep it from ripping. It's true. Edgar is one of the shiny examples of Beryl's youth, but he's more than that. He's a teacher, a teacher of passing yeah. on the Inupiat tradition. It's these youth who will always know and understand who they are in a time when uncertainty has identity of its own. It's these youth who will assure that tomorrow's youth will always know who they are and what it means to be a Nupiat.
I know I shouldn't smoke. I've tried to quit a million times. I know about lung cancer, strokes, heart disease, all that stuff. I mean, they're listed right on the side of the pack. Still doesn't make quitting any easier. But I'm going to keep at it. Because the way I see it, if the reasons on the side of the pack don't get to me, the reason on the front will. Hi, Kleana for flying Bering Air. Bering Air flies throughout Northwest Alaska and has hubs in Nome and Kotzebue. Bering Air flies both helicopters and fixed-wing aircraft, such as our Cessna Caravans, Piper Navajos, Beach King Airs, and our large cargo aircraft, the Kasa. Bering Air offers daily scheduled flights and charters throughout Alaska and the Soviet Far East. Bering Air also provides emergency medical flights for Northwest Alaska. For safe and reliable service, fly with Bering Air. Thank you, all you good folks in Barrow, Alaska, and in King Cove, Alaska. Thank you, you teenagers. So nice to have you on my program. And isn't it great to have your own program? Hey, by the way, kids, listen up. I need you to get your camcorders out and start collecting Christmas greetings. Won't you make that a school project? I want greetings from so many villages that we have to make it a two hour long special. So please do that, won't you? Everyone, get your camcorder out and start collecting those Christmas greetings for the Heartbeat Alaska Christmas special. I'm Jeannie Green. Stay tuned for Heartbeat Alaska. God bless you. See you again next week. Yeah.